Hi guys, welcome to today's vlog. Um, I'm going to be doing my feeding routine today. I've just pulled up at the yard and I have my nutritional head on and then thought that's probably going to be very boring if I give you a lecture on nutrition. But if you'd be interested in learning a bit more about nutrition, let me know and I can do a vlog on it. But I'm just going to briefly go through why I picked the feeds. I'm very fussy with my feeds. I'll go through their supplements. I hope you enjoy it. feed bowls I like to use the rubber ones because they do throw them about and they don't break and they last quite well in the weather because my all my stuff lives outside they get honey chop uh, light and healthy um, I'm really fussy with my feeds and I spent ages and ages deciding what feed to have and actually my first choice of feed was simple systems Lucy stalks but they're really hard to get hold of around here so I went with my second choice which was honey chop light and healthy because it is really high in fibre and really low in starch which is really important for a horse's diet especially as Monty's prone to ulcers and colic so he needs a really low starch diet and Louis as well he needs a molasses free feed because he has sweet itch so it is um, a forage based feed he is mixed, it has loads of little plants in, so there's some dandelions there. It smells really lovely, um, it's not too dry either. I hope you can see me. It's got very high fibre, it's got 28% fibre, which is really good. You want a high fibre diet as possible to keep their systems moving correctly. It's really important for them to have fibre because that's what they're naturally used to. Grass has loads of fibre and hay has loads of fibre in. It's got only 5% protein, where if you had a young horse, you might want something with a bit more protein to help with their build and their muscles. But because both of mine are of a normal age they don't need that much protein especially since they're not in any work so they don't get heed help building up any muscle the total amount of sugar is actually only three percent which is really good because they're both good doers they're both prone to lamy they don't need any extra sugar or energy to help them with their work because they have no work to do starch is only 0.1 percent which is really really low i would never get a feed with more than three percent starch in just because it really doesn't go well in their stomach it's all the additional sugars and bits of nutrients and stuff you don't really want and digestible energy is only 8.5 um, which is really low again i would never get a feed with more than 10 just because they don't need the energy. If your horse needs a lot of energy because it's eventing or it's just in high workload, then maybe get something a bit more higher in energy. But because these guys are retired and do maybe one or two ridden sessions a week, they don't need anything like that. So it's made up of oat straw, timothy grass, linseed and rapeseed oil, and the oil content is only 10%. So that is, that's kind of like a middle range oil. Because the sugar content is so low, it's something I could kind of brush past a little bit. And because it's such natural kind of oil, it's not too bad. It's not additional added oil, it's just natural oils. It's got marigold, herbs, limestone and cinnamon in, which again, just makes it taste a lot nicer, smells a lot nicer, makes it more interesting for them. Horses can consume normally between 1.5 and 2.5% of their ideal weight. Um, both my boys are overweight, so when I was doing their feed calculations, I used their ideal weight, which I think for Monty is 500 kilos and Louis was 450. And because they're in such a low workload, no more than 10% of their diet needs to be concentrated feeds. Because this is um, a roughage based feed, I then adjusted that calculation a bit and did made sure they had no more than 10% of hard feed rather than 10% of concentrated feed. So because the calculation actually ended up with quite a lot of feed, they were getting three, three and a half scoops of feed. I've cut that way down about, I've done like a third of that I think, just because they're in such low work, I've adjusted it a bit. It's all very dependent on your horse and what they do. They have constant access to grass and constant access to hay. And at this time of year, the grass is very stressed. So it's very sugary. So they don't really don't need that much feed the only reason they actually get a feed is so i can make sure they get those little extra nutrients and vitamins they won't be getting in the grass especially over winter 
and this is a complete feed so I don't need to feed a balancer with it as it's got all the extra nutrients and vitamins in anyway. They also get a feed just to make sure that Louis gets all his supplements. Most of his supplements is for his sweet itch but he does have a supplement because he used to be prone to tying up and this was the only supplement that seemed to stop it because it's all to do with muscle support. I'll explain a bit more when I get into their feeding. And Monty then just gets a feed so he doesn't feel left out in the field when Louis gets to bed. They are making their feeds up now. So Monty literally gets about half a scoop max of this stuff just because he gets bored of it really quickly. He gets the flexier bowl just because he throws it around and stands on it a lot more than Louis does. And then Louis gets a whole scoop of this just because he's in a tiny bit more work. He can drop off weight particularly over winter a little bit and his supplements are really powdery so I just like to make sure there's something for them to mix in with. We'll get onto the supplements now. So Louis's first supplement he has is brewer's yeast. So this is just for his sweet itch. It helps keep the flies away. The flies aren't very, don't really like the smell. Some horses don't like it because it's got a really strong taste. It's very marmite -y. But Louis doesn't mind, he's not fussy. And um, it also helps with the itching as well. It helps boost the immune system. So he gets four scoops of that. His next supplement is the gold label vitamin E1000 and it also contains extra selenium which is really good for muscles so this is the supplement he has for his tying up so he gets two scoops of that so this just gives extra support to his muscles which is what the problem is when he ties up so next supplement he gets um, chamomile tea, he gets two tea bags of that. The herbs just help support the immune system again, it helps relieve the itching. And then he gets some red bush tea as well. That two tea bags of that again just gets emptied in again, supports the immune system and just helps relieve the itching. So lots of people do actually brew this and then pour it in the feed but I don't have access to electrical kettle up here so I just feed it straight in the feed so it's just as effective either way it just depends and then his last supplement he gets um, some antihistamines so the it's got the cetrizin I think that's how you say it anyway cetrizin um, ingredient in which is actually the best one proven for horses so he gets a whole packet, so 15 each day. I did start off with 20 just to give him that extra boost. But now we've cut it down to 15. So Monty doesn't actually get any supplements because he doesn't need anything. Like I said, it's just to kind of keep him happy when Louis is getting fed because Louis needs all these supplements. So they just get mixed in. I do it with my hand because there's nothing that disgusting in it. And then I'll take them both over to the hose and we can add some water. So I really like having wet feeds just because I think it's so much easier for them to um, kind of just eat it when it's wet because their feed, obviously, especially in the summer, they need as much water as they can get. So I just like to make sure they're very wet and then they're ready to be fed. I brought the feeds out in the wheelbarrow. I've actually let them out their field just because the grass is a little bit nicer so and they get just enjoy being out of their fields often. So I always make sure I feed Louis first because he can get really food aggressive and he's the boss in the field. Louis gets his feed first and then Monty will come and grab his feed anyway. Louis's very grumpy. So like I was saying earlier guys, these have 10% of their feed as concentrate and 90% of their feed as roughage. That has to actually be dry roughage. So grass, that is actually only about 20% dry roughage because 80% of that's water. 
So you'll think they have constant access to roughage, but they do need supplemented hay sometimes if they don't have lots of access to grass. These guys don't get any hay just because they keep breaking through into the extra bit of their field, which is very stressed grass at the moment. So it's all full of extra sugars and they're just going to get fat if they get extra hay as well. But I do supplement it in winter so that they don't get hungry and they get all the extra roughage they need. So Monty's not actually interested in his dinner because he's got all the long grass out here, but I'm sure as soon as I put them back in the field, they'll, Monty will eat it up very quickly. <laughs> so I'm just gonna chase them back into the field. Come on, Monty. Go on, that's it, you've eaten your dinner. Or are you pretending to be interested now? Come on. Good boy, that's it, go back down. Oh, you're not coming this way. Come on, good boy, keep going. That's it. Good boy. Go, Louie, go. Don't make me lead you. They're both back in their field now. Monty will normally stand there sulking because he wants to come back on the long grass, but he's fat, he doesn't need a lot of grass. So I am going to collect their feed bowls now and we'll take him back up to the yard. It's not really a yard, it's a, it's a concreted area where my fields are. So I'm now going to wash them out. I think it's really important to wash feed bowls out. So you can just get all the excess feed out so that it doesn't go mouldy especially now it's warmer and so it doesn't leave a disgusting taste for them next time you feed because we all know feed goes off and off feed is not nice for them so water gets tipped out and I will just leave them upside down by my stuff to drain. So there we have it guys, that's my feed routine. I hope you enjoyed it. Louis's feeds are quite interesting, Monty's are boring. Normally they would also get carrots, but I am awful and forgot them today and I don't like keeping them up here when it's warm because they go gross. If there's anything you want to know about the feeds, comment below. If you're interested in doing a better nutritional kind of vlog, let me know and I can sort that for you because I am very fussy on my feeds, like I said. So I've done so much research. So just let me know what you want to see and I hope you enjoyed it. See you later guys.